uh, figures. Wow, transmission still full. Cool. I don't have to fill him. Just a ball house. Get back on this 49 Chevrolet 3100 and the three get back on that 3,000 mile maintenance or service uh, scheduled service that I started on this a couple of vlogs ago I got caught up in doing some running in the GMC and I got caught up on working on the tractor on the Kubota both of which well the Kubota needed done and uh, because the gar that grass isn't waiting on anybody and the GMC well it's just fun to drive, so I wanted to get on it. But it's all dreary and rainy out there. Can't do really much of anything outside. So we're back on the 3100. So stay tuned, and we're going to get some stuff done. I'm in no hurry to crawl under it just yet, so I'm going to try to get stuff done that I can get done up top first here. All right. And let's get him off. All right, what we're going to do is take that panel off. Okay, the ball housing here, it doesn't, there's a cork gasket that goes around this, all right, that seals the inside piece to the collar, the ball housing actually to the collar here, and I don't think it's so much leaking there, it is dripping some there, but I think it's leaking actually between the collar and the rear of the transmission. I didn't put any RTV or anything in it, I put it in dry, and what I'm going to do I'm going to back these off. I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to have to get under it here shortly. But I'm going to back it off. I'm going to loosen these here too. And I'm going to RTV both sides of that. Let it uh, drain and dry. And then I'm going to uh, RTV it and reseal it. before, And then let it set overnight before I put anything in it. So anyway, that's the plan on that. And uh, I guess I'm going to go ahead and loosen it, put a drain pan under there, loosen it, let it drain, and then I'm going to get on them rear brakes. Well, the rain's really coming down out there.
Mm -hmm. Looks good. Okay. All right. Now we'll go underneath. Should have broke that loose before I uh, Yeah, should have broke it loose first. Oh well, let me get a strap wrench. Well, there's quite there's, there's a bunch dripping out, so that's kind of good. That means there was still some in there. All right. All right, we're gonna let it drain out. I don't know how good that picture is. It don't look good on the camera, but we'll let it drain out. Then we'll dry it up and put some RTV around that uh, that single gasket. <clears throat> now I'm gonna link where I did the adjustment. <clears throat> to that ball housing there is an adjustment you do and the amount of gaskets or uh, shims that you put between the ball housing and the transmission is what determines how tight or loose the ball the ball housing is in the collar and outside when i did the adjustment the uh <clears throat> the uh getting clogged up here laying on my back but anyway uh, without the cork gasket in the ball housing part, you adjust how tight the uh, uh, the ball housing rotates in the collar. And uh, the three or four that come with its stock was too much. So I had actually got it down to where it was just one because that's how war this thing is. And uh, one is all I could do. I could actually get away with none and maybe some RTV, but I want at least one. So anyway... That's how I got to the adjustment. I'll explain the the uh, video I link will explain it better. All right, I'm going to show a few things with my now cleaned up transmission. This is the uh, the ball housing that covers the uh, U joint inside, like this. Now, what we do is, this is the original gasket that came with it, and the, manifest, the, the re reproduction place provides four, because these gaskets actually set the, uh, the free play in this tail cone here, okay? Now, this was the rubber seal that went inside, that would seal it inside and this would go like this so that would seal him okay that's the original gasket the new one's cork I don't know if I like it but it does have the bevel in there like this does to fit so I am going to replace it. Inside the uh, the uh, housing, this secures the housing to the uh, torque tube. There's a seal right in there. And here's the new replacement that goes in there. I got to pick it out and this will go in. There's two steel washers on either side and that's what keeps it in there. So that's pretty much here on the tail cone. I won't, uh, it's easier to show it outside the truck than underneath there when it's in 
So anyway, uh, this is your speedometer drive there. Of course, there's your gear shifts. And that's that. All right, I've got the, uh, they're calling it, they call it the ball collar. I've been calling it something else. It's actually called the ball collar. I've got it bolted on. I started out with four shims and uh, it was too loose. So uh, I gradually reduced till I'm down to just one shim. Here's a, here's a three. And it's, I can barely move it in all directions. And that's about where you want it. It's almost too loose even with the one shim. You have to have one shim because that's also your gasket to seal the uh, grease because there is grease that's in here. Now. To do the adjustment on this ball collar, the seal that goes between the ball, the, the ball collar and the ball is not installed. Once that is installed, it'll make it tighter uh, to against this seal to seal better. So that's what uh, I hope it'll seal a lot better with that on. Otherwise, I would have to try to find a whole other assembly because I am down to just the one shim remaining. But that's fine. Uh, it was fine before and I didn't lose a whole lot of uh, fluid that was in it. So uh, now I may or may not show this when I go to install the uh, transmission while I'm under there. So what I'm going to do is uh, show this while I've got it out. It's a lot easier. All right. Right here, this, this bolt right here, this, co this comes out. And that is actually how you will fill the rear of the transmission in this ball section with the U-joint with the 8090 oil for lubrication. Over time, the, uh, the grease will slowly drain out of the transmission into this ball collar area. And uh, what, it, what it's been doing in my case is it's been leaking out and going away because this uh, this nut here was very loose on my uh, drive shaft when I went and disassembled this. And of course this was loose because it had the thicker gasket. This, this, this is four thousandths of an inch and that is exactly what four of these replacements equal. So if that's four then one of these is one thousandths of an inch thick and that's all I've got in here. So I've reduced that gap there also. So once you install the transmission, you of course you check your uh, grease right here for the transmission. Then you'll fill this till it just about comes out for the trunnion or what we call the U-joint. So anyway, this is a good, uh, you know, I've got to take the ball collar back off. That's just, uh, that's what I wanted to do this adjustment while it was out of the truck because it's a lot easier. Alright, I'm underneath here and I'm unfortunately, I got, uh, the battery went dead, I thought I was recording, but anyway, I got it, uh, Permatext, uh, RTV, and all the way around, I have not filled it yet, so I'm going to give it, uh, time to, uh, to dry some, to set up before I do, but anyway, oh, it was fun. I'm still under here for the brakes too. Oh me. Alright, we got him cleaned off and everything and dried up. We're gonna let that gasket sit overnight. Then we're going to uh we're gonna fill this ball housing back up. I believe I, I think I said before it took like a pint, maybe a pint and a half, and then we'll top off the transmission. We'll see how low he is too. Well, anyway. Man, was that a job. I was not looking forward to it. I guess that's why you could say I put, kept putting it off. <laughs> <laughs> Transmission's still full. 
Cool. I don't have to fill him. Just the ball housing. I don't know if the video picked it up, but it was pouring out. And that's what you want. I just ain't feeling going underneath here today. <laughs> there we go. Okay, I don't know when it uh, when it died. I guess I will when I see it, but uh, look back. But I'm gonna put about six ounces in this. And this is going in the uh, ball house. straight down what I'm going to do. All right. as much mess as I was making <laughs> that's probably the way to go all right all right what did I put in there Oh, we need some more. Okay. A couple more ounces. All right. That should do it. I wanted six ounces in there. Okay. All right. I'm glad to get this little procedure done and over with. Sticking a fork in it. Anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, this is the second time I've dealt with this uh, ball housing back here. And, uh, the originally it didn't leak hardly at all seemed like with the more usage i put on it the more it leaked and and that's when i discovered that these bolts here that i i could actually tighten them up a little bit more the four that holds the collar to the transmission so i tightened them up but i guess the damage was done it uh it leaked uh more than i like now there's going to be some weepage around this cork seal around the or cork yeah seal around the actual tail cone of the ball housing here because it's it's constantly moving so that's not going to be a you know it's not going to be a 100 percent leak free connection or the tail cone won't move and it's got to move because that is the actual flexible joint of the whole drivetrain so anyway so i expect some leakage but i, I wanted to slow down what i was getting so hopefully now going with the RTV on that uh, collar between the collar and transmission connection will really will fix me up. Uh, I was glad to see that uh, number one the uh, gasket shim was not busted. It was actually I cleaned it up good and I kept it on there, so I didn't have to disassemble the U joint in order to put a new gasket on. So we reused that gasket, cleaned it up good, and. Uh, RTV connection, let it set overnight. Uh, when, uh, as you could tell uh, in the previous uh, uh, section here, that uh, I didn't have to put any grease. I was happy to see I didn't have to put any grease in the transmission. So the last time I serviced this was 3,000 miles ago, and it was still coming out the hole. So that's good. I put six ounces in the uh, uh, in the ball housing uh, void here because uh, when I disconnected it to fix it, uh, to, to seal it, I, it drained out about maybe two ounces or so, somewhere around in that, which is, uh, I was happy to see that. That means that it was still had enough 
lube in it to lube that U-joint, or trunnion as the manual calls it. So that's good. So I was glad to see several of those. So mechanically, we're sound. I just wanted to try to stop that leak, and hopefully we did. We should see in the next day or so, I put, a, I put some cardboard under here to catch it to see if there's any new drips. And of course, uh, it may not really rear its head till we get out here and do some running around. And then, uh, then we'll see. But again, I was really glad. 3,000 miles, no leaks. Uh, all right. So I think we're just going to go ahead and button him back up. Put this back together. I don't need to get any more access into here because uh, uh, what I want to, what I've got left to do before I put this back on the road. But anyway, we'll put the panels on, and then we'll get back here and check them brakes out. But I'm gonna do them brakes at another time. This is a, uh, I believe I'm gonna stick a fork in this for the day, even though this is the next day. You can't hear it, but the rain's pounding and everything, and I got some other stuff I need to get done on the inside. So anyway. Thanks for watching. Hope everything's going good with you and yours. Going good here. Can't complain if I if it was, because it wouldn't do me any good anyway. So, hope to see you on the next vlog. All right. So you take it easy. Have a good one, and we'll see you.